How's it going, fight fans? Joey G from Wrestling Headlines, and we are once again joined by a very special guest. He is the Texas heavyweight champion, the crown jewel of Bullet Club, and you know what? the crown jewel in any pro wrestling fan's heart. We are talking to New Japan Pro Wrestling's Chase Owens. Mr. Owens, good morning to you, sir. Thank you very much for joining us today. Joey, what's up, my dude? What's up, my dude? I uh, appreciate after our little uh, Zoom fiasco that we were able to figure this out. We package pile drived it, and now we're finally able to communicate. Um, how's everything going over there? I, the I am no... Uh no technologically expert so <laughs> something you know wrong I'm like, uh, i don't know I, how to fix this yeah neither am i but you know what we don't need to worry about it because we are experts enough to be able to uh collaborate in this moment um you know there's a lot of fun things to talk about your career man i mean you have pretty much uh done all of this you know your rise into the position that you are now is a true truly unique story and if we can go back my first question uh, when you first joined New Japan, um, prior to you joining the Bullet Club, you got to work with the legendary Jushin Thunder Liger in a series of matchups. I just want to know, do you have any fond memories of working with the man? I believe you guys were feuding over the, the NWA Junior Heavyweight Championship at that time, if I, uh, if I recall. That's correct. Uh, you know, it was my, what, second, second trip? Maybe, no, what? No, actually, my first trip. We uh, we wrestled Bushi, and then uh, you know the my manager at the time, Bruce Tharp, who was the president of the NWA. Uh, you know we just beat Bushi. We're standing in the ring, and then he, you know, calls out Jushin Thunder Liger. Uh, you know, so my first trip to Japan at what was I, 24, 25 years old, and um, you know, and here comes you know the living legend. Uh, you know, just superhero-esque over here in Japan, you know, and it was just that moment of, of hearing the crowd and, uh, you know, and, and watching a guy that I've watched, you know, in WCW uh, come to the ring was, you know, was a surreal moment. That's a real moment. And you know what? You guys put on a great series of matches. What a uh, great way to showcase your skills not just to the New Japan faithful, but across the world, you know, as at that time, New Japan is slowly kind of rebuilding their broader audience over in the U.S. And you've continued to do so during your time since you re-signed there fully, uh, you know, uh, having great showings in the, uh, uh, I believe it was the, the New Japan Cup. You beat Juice Robinson. You got to challenge for the IWGP United States Championship. You let the world know that Chase Owens was uh, not there to clown around. He was there for business. Uh, now let's jump, obviously, you joined one of the most legendary factions, maybe in pro wrestling history, in Bullet Club. And during that time, you've gotten a tag with a great many number of the Bullet Club faithful. Uh, Bad Luck Fale, you got in a tag with Kenny Omega, uh, Yujiro Takahashi, El Fantasma recently. Um, did you have a favorite Bullet Club member to tag with? Uh, you know what? It's a hard question because I think like everybody has their own little, you know, niches that that make it different um, to tag with them. Uh, you know, pretty much like tagging with everybody on the squad except for, but he's not here now. Mm -hmm. But uh, the original phone soldier, that was just a mess. But uh, you know, everybody else, you know, they like I said, they just got their their own little, you know, technique, whether it's, it's Fale with his power or, uh, you know, Fantasmo with his athleticism, uh, you know, Jay with his ring awareness, uh, you know, just Tama and T with their, you know, they're, they're already, you know, one of the greatest tag teams to be in New Japan. So just their tag team specialty, you know, like just everybody in there has their own thing. So, you know, I, I can't really say like, oh, I had, more fun with this guy than uh, he did. Uh, uh, uh. You know, yeah, I think I was more leaning towards, uh, and you already did so, being able to differentiate what was good with each guy. Like you said, Fale with the Fale with the power or, you know, G.O.D. with the viciousness. And it was truly cool to see you in those matches with those guys and keeping that collective unit. Uh, right now, my man, I mentioned it in my intro, you are the Texas heavyweight champion. 
a championship that has got a lot of lineage, a lot of prestige. I mean, this belt goes back decades to guys like Vern Gagne, to guys like the Von Eriks. I mean, it's a who's who's list. How, do you, how does it feel now to be able to carry a title that has been so prestigious to the sport of pro wrestling? Oh, it's incredible. Uh, you know, there's the same way that I felt with the NWA World Junior title, um, to be able to, to carry these belts that, you know, absolute legends have, have carried. Um, you know, it's, it's different than just some, you know, just some local independent show, you know, that people... Uh, you know, they don't go anywhere but 10 miles around their house or whatever, you know, and that's, I'm not trying to put that down if that's what people, you know, do, because you also, you start somewhere. I mean, I was that, uh, you know, so, but I mean, some people, that's as far as they want to go, it's just to wrestle in their little local area, and if that's what it is, then that's absolutely, you know, cool. I don't have any, uh, you know, bad intentions towards those guys or whatever, but, you know, like, like I said, I was uh, to carry these belts with the names of these titles of hell. Uh, you know, it's a great honor to be on that list. Well, you know what? And it's a great honor for us, the fans, to have such a great representative, not just for such a prestigious title, but for the state of Texas. I'm not from Texas, but I will speak for them and say that we are happy to have oh, you. Yeah. I'm going to say, <laughs> oh, you're from Texas? <laughs> um, you know, it's also nice to see uh, and to get your thoughts on this also. Uh, that NJPW is uh, supportive of you carrying the belt. I believe they've even uh, put out a T-shirt for you now, uh, you know, uh, claiming you as what you, which you are, the Texas Heavyweight Champion. I mean, is that nice to have NJPW behind you and like to push up, uh, to push you not only up, but also once again raise the uh, legacy of this belt? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, you always want support from, you know, the company that you work for or, or whatever. You know, sometimes I see guys at companies and they're kind of burying the company's ideas or you know we're booking ideas or, or whatever and it's like shouldn't be burying someone that's doing your paychecks uh, uh -huh. but so to have new japan backing it and acknowledging it you know and even putting out a t-shirt um you know that that's more I'm trying to think of how the that's more weight with me than, you know, than let's say money or yeah. something, you know, if somebody offered $5 million, like, yeah, that's a lot of money. And, uh, you know, it'd be tempting to take, but at the same time, then you got to think, I'd be happy there. Uh, you know, do they, do they take care of you besides just money or whatever, you know, and that's, that's new Japan. Um, you know, this whole six years that I've been here, they, you know, they've, taking care of me well that's good to hear man and i, like I don't I, speak. I don't see uh i don't see me going anywhere anytime soon well hey listen we you know we love seeing you us the wrestling fan base love seeing you in new japan love seeing what you've already done and we look forward to seeing what you're going to do uh you know there's still a lot of titles in the new japan um lineage that we would love to see draped over chase owen's shoulder i actually wanted to talk to you about one of those titles and just get your thoughts you know, New Japan earlier this year, they pretty much put uh, put to rest the IWGP Intercontinental title, a title that hadn't really had too long of a history. Um, did you have any personal reaction with them finally deciding to unify that with the heavyweight championship? Are you sad that you can't challenge for it? Or just what is the general thoughts uh, of, the, of the backstage uh, now that that title is no longer in existence? Uh, you know, for me, I don't have any, like, personal connection as I've never challenged for it. I never held it, you know, blah, blah, blah. But there is, you know, the same with, with these titles that I have held, like the list and the prestige of the titles. Yes, it would be, you know, cool to have your name on that list. Uh, so for it to be joined, um, you know, that's, I mean, it's one of these things like that, eh, it's not, that big of a deal to me but at the same time like you know it does suck that it's not around anymore mm. um you know but now they have you know this new title or coming out with a new title or whatever and um you know and it's restarts the history uh you know and, and that list is going to be great wrestlers no matter what because it's new japan 
New Japan. Ain't it the truth, buddy? And you know what? I have a feeling, a suspicion, that that title, that legacy, is going to be engraved with the Chase Owens name. Because like I said, man, your work from day one since you got there, even before joining Bullet Club, uh, has been exceptional. And I am personally very excited to see what uh, what else you're going to do with the company. I only got one more question for you. I know it's early morning over there. You got your stuff you want to do. Uh, and I thank you again for joining me, Joey G. at no Wrestling problem. Headlines. Um, you know, we're coming back in 2021 from a very difficult 2020 with the pandemic, with things shutting down. I know you're as aware of it as I am. Uh, now that it seems that uh, New Japan has been touring a little bit more, you have been getting some fans that have been able to attend the buildings. I know you guys aren't running. I don't believe they're running full capacity yet. But you've always been someone that's had a good connection with the Japanese fan base. How has it been having them back? Is it nice, even though that there are restrictions on not so much cheering, but clapping, being able to participate, but has it been good having them back in the building? Oh, absolutely. You know, I think they're at, I can't say for sure, but I think it's, they're allowed 40 percent maybe or i'm not i'm not sure exactly that's all above my pay grade sure, sure. Uh, you know but uh but yeah so those first few you know tapings we did for new japan strong with no fans or for some of these arenas that we did no fans like wrestling in front of no fans is is a completely different uh to animal you know because that's what you feed off of um you know so every every move land you know landing every bump every little nick like it hurt way worse <laughs> if, you know than if you got people in there cheering and you know and your adrenaline pumping a little more uh you know so it's definitely nice to have the fans back in and hopefully in the very near future hopefully we're uh back to normal and you know running full speed people can scream and cheer and you know instead of just having to clap hands or whatever mm -hmm. well i tell you buddy uh from the bottom of my heart i also cannot wait for that to happen i cannot wait for a full cork and hall a full tokyo dome uh to be screaming the name of the crown jewel chase owens we very much appreciate your time thank you so very much and you have yourself a great day thank you for having me of course oh yeah we could too sweet on our way out